Today's video, we're going to be talking about a super controversial but interesting topic that I think uh, many have talked about before or at least thought about in markets. So without further ado. All right, traders. So let's talk about two main hypotheses that are super important before we go into um, how to really profit from these. Random walk theory and the efficient market hypothesis. I'm simplifying these two theories, but just to let you guys know, many of you probably already know what that means, but if you don't, it's fine. Random walk hypothesis is basically saying that uh, asset prices will just move randomly and they can't be predicted. So random walk hypothesis really is just that prices just move randomly or move to so many factors that no one can really predict them. That's you know random theory, that these prices will take a random walk. In the future. Now, the efficient market hypothesis, I would say, is a little bit more complex because there are multiple layers to it, multiple levels of how efficient a market can be. But it's really the the main thesis of it is that prices reflect all information regarding a tradable asset. So what that means is that every single aspect, every single point of data and information is already built into the asset. So there's nothing really, there's no really edge that you can get because everything's already priced in correctly. That's the efficient market hypothesis. Whether or not these are true is really muddy. Um, I don't know if anyone's gonna ever really be able to predict or, or, or say that these are true or to say that these are false. It's, it's, it's a really complex theory these two are. And you know we'll see in the future really uh, how markets move not just crypto, but all kinds of markets. Um, so that'll be really, really interesting. But uh, most important part in uh, the, the the video topic today is not just me saying, oh, markets are random, blah, 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 end of video. There, there's a lot more to it than that. There are things that you can take advantage of if you even believe that the market is efficient or if you believe that the market is random, okay? But first, let me go a little bit deeper into random walk theory and into efficient market hypothesis. So I did some research on machine learning applied to crypto and machine learning applied to the stock market and all kinds of markets. Interesting, when you research it, you will find that machine learning has failed time and time again to discern exploitable patterns that it can actually profit from. So people think that like machine learning or neural networks are like the holy grail of trading. So far in 2020, they are clearly not. Um, more of these have failed than succeeded if you really look into the numbers. And a lot of, uh, okay, the second point that I made further when most traders blow up their accounts is that's not the same as machine learning. Uh, but, but what I want to talk about is that it's not that machines are terrible or suck at trading. That's not the thing. Retail traders also are famous for mostly blowing up their accounts. And I think that the reason why both machines and men or men and women uh, typically fail is because of their own emotions. And I think that the reason that machines fail is because it is very, very, very difficult, uh, even for machine learning to adapt to a, a, an organism that is constantly in a state of change, that has so many external factors that can't be called, that can't be uh, mitigated. Because if you look at something like chess, Go or StarCraft, other things that machine learning has really beat, and no one can beat machine learning in those games now, uh, more or less, in those games, those are closed system, right? Chess and Go are, are closed. There's no outside factor that's going to come in and give you five queens. There's no outside factor that's going to give you 10 more moves in Go. And there's no you know outside factor or besides hacks in StarCraft that's going to give you like some big advantage. It, it's a closed system. Markets are not a closed system. There are lots of things coming in and out. And it's an organism that's growing and dying every single day. I think that's why machines have had such a hard time consistently making money. So let's now talk about less, you know, complaining or, or saying, hey, this is the state of the market, we can't beat it. Let's talk about what can we do if the market is random. So if prices are actually completely random or prices are perfectly efficient, either hypothesis, there are still ways to profit beyond simple just buy and sell decisions. So the only ways that you can profit if you believe that the markets are random, this is a handful of ways. One of them is arbitrage and inefficiency. So if there is a severe mispricing between markets, that in itself can be arbitraged. And you can actually take advantage of that as long as you, you know, beat the transaction costs, 
uh, volatility over time doesn't hurt you, which sometimes can with arbitrage, and that the markets are liquid enough. But arbitrage is a way that, that you can profit from this. Another thing that's a little bit more complex but goes right into my Delta Neutral course is market incentives, which that will hopefully make sense if you, uh, if when you look at my Delta Neutral course. But market incentives actually provide a manner in which you can almost exactly predict what's going to happen in very specific outcomes. Now, I don't want to be like too specific with what those outcomes are um, because that's Delta Neutral, uh, you know, a course that I don't want to just give away for free. It's just that certain incentives in certain markets, yeah, you can you, you can PM me and we can talk about it, but I, I don't want to talk about that one too publicly. Okay, so another thing that you can do if everything's random, uh, a, a pretty famous strategy, a potentially profitable strategy you can take is options trading. And this is actually something that I got from Nassim Taleb, Nassim Taleb, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it. I just read his book, Fooled by Randomness. Really good book. Probably the best book that I've read related to markets. Better than Malcolm Gladwell that I've recommended in the past. Phenomenal book. Something that he did is he took advantage of mispricings of options because originally, I mean, what I write down here is a bit different, but originally he thought that many people discount the fact that a black swan can occur. Many people discount the fact that price could fall 90% right now like that. And what he does is he found a way to make money whenever those very rare events happen. Because when those very, very rare events happen, that's typically when most traders lose everything because that black swan happens and they lose everything. But for him, he would rather have a profit graph like this. I lose a little bit here, I lose a little bit here, I lose a little bit here, and I lose a, bit, a little bit here, I lose a little bit here, but I'm not blowing up my account, I just lose a little bit every day. And then when that rare event happens, whoosh, you know, just, quadruple my account. That's a way you can trade. Uh, you just need to be very, very smart with what you're doing and make sure you're not like buying overpriced options, of course. So I'm gonna give you guys an example here that I find really interesting. So then I did some research on, uh, and this is a scenario that does actually happen quite a bit. So imagine that BTC just declined 15% a day. That's a lot. Um, imagine like a massive wick, 15% down, 15% down, this is a lot of volatility. Many traders become very, very bearish. They all say, the market's clearly gonna go lower. Like, obviously it's gonna go lower. Thus, options can be mispriced, such that there is actually less at risk and more to gain if one were to buy a call rather than buy a put. Remember when we buy a call, we want the market to rise. If we buy a put, we want the market to fall. So all else being equal, I'm talking about like, imagine every single factor was equal. Every single factor was equal. But if you look at the pricing of puts versus calls with all else equal, the puts are just completely overpriced and the calls are underpriced. So what would, what, why is this, let's talk about why this is occurring and then we're gonna talk about how we profit from this. Why this is occurring is because traders could be trying to hedge against future black swans, hedge against another market fall, or they're long on Bitcoin with enough Bitcoin that they don't want it to like go to zero and lose everything so that they hedge that long Bitcoin with buying puts. But then if suddenly everyone wants to buy puts to protect themselves against any kind of future market fall, then puts will naturally become more expensive. And potentially they'll become even more expensive than calls, okay? Because a lot of people, when they see something really, really scary you know, happening, that's when they learn next time, or, or don't learn next time, but learn in the moment, hey, maybe I should hedge myself right now, when in reality, they should have hedged themselves before. You know, They should have bought that out of the money put before the black swan happened, but we all aren't that perfect. So really what I'm saying here is that even if you believe that, that the market is just completely random, there's nothing you can do to profit from it. Just looking at probability and payoff, if you believe that there's an equivalent chance that the market rises 1K rises 1K or drops 1K, if you think there's a completely even chance of one month that that will happen, then you can just look for a mispricing. So let's say that you find a pricing such that a certain option, you will lose 2% of your account, okay? Uh, if you buy a call, but you will make 10% if it, makes, if it uh, wins. But then you see a put where you will lose, let's say 5% and only make 7%. So clearly you can see that buying the call in that situation is a lot better than buying a put, but imagine that everyone in the market is just saying that the market can go down. It's probably gonna go down. And let's say even you believe that the market's probably gonna go down and has like a 60% chance or 60 to 70% chance the market's gonna go down. It would probably still be a better play for you to buy that call 
even if you think the market's going to go down. And the reason for that is because if that 30% chance does occur and the market does rise somehow, you're, you will make far more money um, than the amount that you would lose from that put if the market rises. I know this is a little bit complicated. I don't want to get too far in the weeds of it, but I'm telling you guys that even if the market is random, even if there's like uh, very efficient markets, I am confident and optimistic enough to believe that people are the ones that you can exploit. That people overvalue the market falling. People overvalue the market rising. People overvalue the need for a hedge. People then undervalue the need for a hedge. And whenever these things happen, the best thing to do is to take advantage of too many people wanting something and then giving it to them or doing the opposite. Okay. So the bottom line, let's, let's talk about what can you take away from this? Well, in my optimistic view, every single market does contain an inefficiency that can be profited from. I know that's a pretty bold statement, but I'm, I believe it, especially in crypto. I think that every market, there's something you can do if you believe that prices are random or that prices are very efficient. Here are just four things that I've mentioned. This is not everything, but think about this. There are gaps in market knowledge between traders. What that means is some traders know systems, know strategies, know instruments they can use that other traders just don't know. And that gives them an edge over other traders and over the market. There are also gaps in information and data between traders. What that means is that trader A could have access to great data, whereas trader B is just using RSI and price and volume, just not really using much data. But trader A has all that data. Well. That's a massive gap in the information between traders and potentially also a gap in between the market knowledge between those traders. The third is something that I had just talked about in the um, options slide. There are typically gonna be mispricings of derivative contracts, mispricings of options contracts, where people overvalue the chance that the market rises, people undervalue the chance that the market falls, people undervalue the chance that the market's just going to tank, i.e. a black swan event. And what we can do is we can take advantage of these underpricings by buying them cheap and take advantage of overpricings and selling high with these derivative contracts. Just remember with this kind of strategy of betting against the herd, you, you could see something where you have tiny losses, tiny losses consistently, and then eventually a very big gain because potentially you were betting on a low probability event. The final thing is basically delta neutral, which is over overpriced and underpriced markets relative to incentive. Again, I'm not going to say what that incentive is in Delta Neutral. You know, you would know if you were one of the traders within that Discord. But there are other incentives beyond just Delta Neutral. If you can actually look into incentives within many markets and see deeper into why they rise or why they fall, then that can give you an edge. And a good example of that is Ampleforth. Um, I recent I recently did a little bit more research on Ampleforth, and it's very strange. It, it, it's, it's a cryptocurrency that doesn't really have as much correlation to other markets. And it also has a fluctuating supply. And I would highly recommend you go check that out. But the reason I'm mentioning that isn't because I want you to buy it or sell it. I No, do whatever you want. It's because that market actually has incentives. Someone just tried to call me. Um, that market actually has incentives for, for its rises and falls. So I think that that's something very, very important to look at. So that's gonna be it for this video today. Um, I know that this was not like a super flashy, you know, charts all over the place, me giving you some strategy. If anything, this could be a little bit depressing. You know, this could be a little bit more like a, huh, what do we do? But I hope that you take away from this video the fact that there are many ways that you can profit even if you believe that the markets are random. And if you believe otherwise, if you believe that the markets are completely efficient and there's zero inefficiency and there's nothing you can do, then you should not be in the markets because in your view, it would be a losing game. For me, I believe that this is a winning game, but you gotta find an inefficiency. You gotta find incentives. You gotta go deeper than just buying and selling. And I hope that you can take that away from this video. Happy trading, and I'll see you in the next one.